Hey everyone, welcome to Morality, your channel for React Native content. Today we're going to be talking about the use reducer hook. So let's start off by uh, what it is, when to use it, and why you should use it. So the use, redu use reducer hook is an alternative to use state that accepts a reducer and returns the current state paired with the dispatch method. This is similar to Redux. If you're not familiar with that, don't worry. We'll talk about that in a later video. Situation when you would use use reducer hook is uh, where it's more preferable to use than the use state hook. For example, when you have complex state logic that involves sub values or when the next state depends on the previous one. A reason why you should use use reducer is it lets you optimize performance for components that trigger deep updates because you can pass dispatch down instead of callbacks. So in today's example, we're going to show you how to use use reducer hook to display counter information, similar to what we did with the use state hook in a previous video. So we'll go ahead and get started. We'll create a file called use reducer hook.js. I'm just creating this in the root directory of the project. So we're going to type rnfe. It should be a snippet by default. Um, you can see here it's coming from React Native Functional Export Component ES7 plus React Redux React Native Snippets. That's an extension if you would like to install that so that way you could just press RFNE and then when you hit uh, enter you'll get this nice little snippet. Let me go to ESLint to get rid of those squiggly lines for right now. Those are just for um, linting the files, which you can check out our ESLint uh, setup for React Native video that we talked about previously if you want to set that up for your environment. Okay, so now we have this snippet code. What we'll do first is we're going to create a const called initial state and we're going to set that to an object the key value pair of count and zero. Now I'm going to show you how to set this up in two ways. The first way is the um, direct initialization and I'm going to show you how to do a lazy initialization um, and what that means is, say you want to set up the reducer in from outside of it. Um, we'll get more into that in a minute. Let me finish setting up this one first. So now what we'll do is we have our, our initial state. And we're going to set up our reducer. And we're going to say... going to give it state and action props and then we're going to use a switch statement where that's going to be dependent on the action dot type value and our first case is going to be increment so that way we can actually increment the counter and in that case we will return count and we're going to get state.count plus one our next case is going to be decrement here we're going to return count and we're going to set that to state.count minus one and if you're wondering how I'm just hitting tab and this code is auto-completing, um, that's from using the tab 9 extension. I can uh, show you all the extensions I use if you're interested in them in a later video. Uh, last case is going to be uh, if we want to reset. So we have we could increment the counter, we could decrement it. Now what if we want to reset it? So we'll go ahead and set that up. And what we'll do is we'll just set it back to the initial state, which is going to be count zero. And 
And last one, we always need to throw in our default. And we're going to throw a new error if something went wrong. OK, now moving on. So we set up our initial state. We set up our reducer. Now we're going to say const state and dispatch. We're going to use reducer for that. First parameter is going to be reducer. Second is going to be the initial state. And then now in the return, we just need to set this up a little bit. OK, we have a view. I'm going to throw a text component here. Make sure that's imported. Yep, it is. OK. Inside there, we're going to have state dot count. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to app.js. And under this, I'm going to throw in the use reducer hook. That's self-closing. We imported it here. I like to separate third party and local values. Use reducer. We need to press, uh, go to the end of the thing that you want to import. You press control space. And now to import. And you can check up here that we have imported use reducer from React. So now we can see here that this says use reducer hook. That's this text right here. And we have our count, which is, of course, zero, because that's what we initialized it to. So now let's uh, finish up with the styling. I'm going to say style equals, give this a font size of 50. I'm going to turn off auto save here. So we don't keep seeing this red. OK. And then I'm going to have three touchable opacities right here. So I'm going to do, I'm going to have a text component inside of them, which shows the. Uh, Icon plus minus and then reset. So I want to make three of these, copy and paste them. Okay. Inside here, I'm going to put the plus. Inside here, I'm going to put the minus. Inside here, it's going to say reset. Okay, now you can see we have our icons here, buttons. All right, so now I need to style this flex direction. We're going to set it to row. So now these should span out this way. There we go. Style this. Set font size to 50. Get to on press in a minute. We're gonna say we need to put some margin right here so we could spread the icons away from each other. There we go. I'm gonna do the same thing with the minus sign. Except in this case, we don't need a margin right. There we go. And this last one, I'm actually going to take it outside of this view. That way it'll be under it. Then I'm going to give this a style with a font size of 30. There we go. OK, so now this is looking pretty good so far. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to set up the on press functions or properties 
for the touchable opacities. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass the arrow function here. We're gonna say dispatch. And inside that function, we're going to pass an object. And we're gonna say type is increment. So what's happening here is when we press this plus sign, this touchable opacity, dispatch is gonna call and it's gonna look for this type called increment. So inside here we have the types and we have increment. So what's gonna get returned is um, count from the initial state and it's gonna say state.count plus one. So we could test that out and we could say plus and now we get one, then two, then three, then four. So that's working. Now let's do the same thing with decrement. I'm gonna copy and paste this on press uh, property right here. Except here we're gonna call this decrement. So let's test that out. Now you can see we could decrement, we could increment. And then lastly, this touchable opacity, the type is going to be reset. So now what should happen is when we press the reset, we should get zero. And we do, so it's working. Now we could go increment, reset, decrement, reset. Okay, so now you can see all of the buttons are working fine. Um, so now we have the standard way of using the use reducer hook. Um, another thing that we can do is something called lazy initialization, which I'll show you how to do that right now. One more thing real quick is that um, there's two ways to special uh, specify the initial state. Um, you can either pass it as a second argument like we did right here or you can say reducer undefined and then a third argument as reducer the same as the first argument and this will em emulate the uh, redux behavior however um, react does not encourage this so this way is the recommended way to specify the initial state and set up your use reducer hook so back to lazy initialization. What this means is that if you don't want to specify the initial state uh, in this use reducer hook, um, say you're going to get an initial state um, from somewhere else outside of the reducer, um, you can pull that information in here. You can say initial count, for example. And you could pull that in through the props and then you can use that to set it up. And let me show you how to do that real quick. I'm gonna delete that for now. So what we can do is we can, we're going to use another function called init. I'm gonna say initial count We're going to return an object. Like this. So what's going to happen now is we're going to have um, right here is going to be initial count. So let me go ahead and declare that up here. set it equal to zero. So this is lazy, lazy initialization. So if we were to bring the initial count in through the props, then we could use it in here, but I'm just going to create it here so I don't have to pass it through another file right now. So we have initial count. So now what we're going to do is we set initial count as the second argument. And then the third argument is 
the new function we created up here called init. So what it's going to do is going to take that count and it's going to return an object with that value for the key count. Then what we need to do is we need to modify our reducer function. So I'm going to comment this out and we're going to say return init with action dot payload. And then one more thing we need to change is down here for the reset since we since we changed the reset uh, case up here we need to change it down here in the in the dispatch function as well so we'll put comma payload initial state actually initial count so basically what we're doing is we're saying okay what value do we want it to be? This should be init, not initial state. Okay. So just to recap, lazy initialization. We pull in the value through props. However, we're just using a, a dummy value here. Create a function to initialize this object. We updated the reset case and now we return in it action dot payload and right here is going to be the payload which is going to be the initial count which is zero and then we change the use reducer um, arguments to initial count instead of initial state and added a third argument called in it so now let's go ahead reload our app now we can see we can increment, reset, decrement, reset. So now everything's working as we expect it to. So those are the two ways that you can initialize and use the use reducer hook. Uh, one last note is that um, there's a bailing out of a dispatch. So with the use reducer hook, um, if you return the same value from use from the reducer hook as the current state react will bail out without rendering the children or firing effects um, so for example uh, if you're doing expensive calculations while rendering uh, you can optimize them with uh, use memo which be which will be the hook for our next video uh, so keep an eye out for that um, if you guys have any other questions comments feel free to leave them below Please like and subscribe. We're going to be still working through these hooks. Uh, we have today was the fourth one, so we have nine more to go. Then we're going to jump into um, talking about React Native more in depth, um, and then start working on smaller builds, and then working our way up to bigger ones. Basically, the idea is to start everyone off so you could follow from knowing nothing about React Native. Uh, to learning about each thing each day with us and then you could start to learn to build apps on your own um, so if there's anything you'd like to see please leave it down below in the comments um, thank you for stopping by today and have a good day